growth and transformation. An ignition sequence is the third in a series of installations and is very much an extension off of the earlier body of work, Brain Fruit. And this piece, Brain Sprout OG1, is sort of a small offshoot from that larger installation. And the catalog you have um, gives you a sense, has some images of that installation, which gives you a, a sense of that larger environment, that larger body of work. With breakthrough, I was focused pretty specifically on the neurological. I was thinking about synaptic exchange, the elastic potential of the mind, and I became interested in the electrical impulses that control human thought and behavior. And that led to a broader interest in bioelectricity. And bioelectricity is the electric current that flows through all living tissue. It's what allows your heart to beat, your muscles to contract, your synapses to fire. And in my mind, it's sort of at the core of what it means to be alive and to have a consciousness. And I was sort of blown away by this idea that we're actually highly complex electrical devices um, on the microscopic level. And that was the initial catalyst for this work. So while the works, you know, they take on life of their own, they're very much imaginative systems, they're based in real phenomena, and that's an, an important starting point for the work. I'm increasingly interested in bioengineering and the uh, experiments that involve the human manipulation of living systems. For example, Angela Belcher has this great TED talk where she is, and she's running a program at MIT where they're using viruses to grow batteries. And she talks about her dream being to launch a virus-powered car. And she talks about combining elements on the periodic table in ways nature hasn't thought of yet, or we might not think of for thousands of years. And the implications of that are just fraught with potential, exciting potential, but also terrifying potential. Um, so I hope for my work to embody this uh, sense of potential and flux, um, but also to have this tension where it's ambiguous whether the forms are benign or toxic. So the work is playful and inviting, but also maybe a little unnerving and a little disconcerting. Um, and that idea of potential is embodied through the use of installation itself. Installation is a mode of working. So I think of each installation as a frozen moment in the life of the work. And it's important that the work changes each time it's installed, so that there's this continual expansion and sense of flux and movement and vitality. Um, and the drawings have become a really important counterpart for the sculpture. The sculpture is very cumbersome. It takes you know, it's labor intensive, it takes months and months and months to fabricate an installation. And that's really important in part of the process, allowing that room for things to sort of grow in unexpected ways and evolve slowly. But the drawing process offers this wonderful sense of immediacy, and it's sort of this great space for the overflow of all the things I can't quite articulate quickly enough through the sculpture. Um, I'm thinking a lot about the relationship between drawing and sculpture and sort of thinking of the two as systems of working. And, and the potential for slippage between them. So the drawings I think of as very sculptural. There's so much about depth and structure and layers. And I've always thought of the sculpture as drawings in space, as so much about line and movement. Um, and this drawing, action potential, um, was an important precursor for ignition sequence for this body of work. So there's sort of these yellow voltages that shoot through that drawing, and I like to think that I've sort of pulled those off the two-dimensional surface and brought them into three-dimensional space uh, with some of the forms of this installation. And this is one part of this installation. This is actually one of sort of three larger parts that sort of take over various spaces in various ways, and it kind of becomes viral in the end uh, as it moves from the time. I think I'll leave stop there and see what kind of questions we might have. Are these, are, are these pieces that attach themselves that are in contact with the wall? Are they are they resting on the wall or are they attached? They're plugged into the wall. Yeah. Uh, so it's wire and I just drill a tiny hole into the wall and yeah. just plug them right in. And I use multiple epoxy on site um, so that you can't quite see how the hardware attaches and then I use touch up paint on site. When so we were talking earlier about when you just said about uh, how it needs to be different in each mm -hmm. situation, and I got to look at the little piece that's on the connecting to the window frame, yeah. and I go, well, that 
that piece just might be resting there by the grace of gravity and all of a sudden you know, I'm real curious about what the, what the attachments are. You know, if it's strict when all the rest of us seem so not strict. And that's, I think that's part of part of how that is blurred because this looks so kind of unplanned, but it's, right. it's kind of heavily planned. Well, it isn't, it isn't. Yeah. It's, you know, the work and how the parts kind of come together is planned, and it's just, but it's designed in a way that it's adaptable and it's flexible. Yeah. And when I come into a space, I don't have a set plan. Yeah. Um, and I respond to the space and sort of see what happens. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, I'll suspend things and combine things and step back and tear it all down and start yeah. again. So um, there is sort of this push and pull between, yeah. um, you know, an intuitive response to space and then, you know, an, an intentional thing yeah. for how to work the wall. It's pretty interesting to me how, even though this piece is in the round and it's in our space, this has much more of a drawing feel yeah. than the things that are on paper, right. which have kind of a deep relief, yeah. you know, kind of like an intaglio feel, or kind yeah. of like an etching feel yeah. to them. Yeah, that's true. I was wondering, personally, um, you always talked about this section of brain fruit mm -hmm. being the impetus for this larger inspiration. Yeah. What about this piece inspired uh, the larger recognition scene? Well, it was this interest in uh, electrical impulses. And I started reading, I found this great article that was about mild electrical brain stimulation, which is basically new experiments that they're doing where they're hooking people up to electrodes and they're pumping them full of mild, mild voltages and seeing how it affects um, psychological states and well-being. And it's, it, they're getting some pretty amazing results. So that led to this interest in bioelectricity. Um, which kind of opened up this whole other world. Um, and these forms are sort of actually, this was the, these electrical plug forms, which get pretty abstracted, were the initial forms that I fabricated for this work. So I was thinking, you know, very basically about our relationship to electricity on a daily basis and our, our understanding of it as this, you know, something we really take for granted and sure. um, have a limited understanding of it, and then thinking about how that translates into our own body. Yeah, because like when I'm looking at the brain for installation as you did, I'm like relating that to like the brain and like um, it's like a really complex network in your head. Like I can see like through all the like the, the lines that are going on, it has like a really complex depth network kind of feel to it. It's, like it just has like run looking to it and all these like shadows and lines is so like complex and it has so much depth in it. And, like I kinda think of that way with the brain, how how much we think and all like electrons going on. Stuff, so. Well, what you're saying is so much like we don't know about how the brain works and about how the body works, you know? And I think that potential, uh, yeah, is exciting. In the brain fruit piece, you use very bright colors, which I think speaks to like electricity and a charge. Mm -hmm. But in the newer piece, um, you've chosen primary colors. Was right. there a reason for that? It actually wasn't intentional sort of happened that way and I sort of became aware of the primary colors and I I like the idea of sort of bringing it back to the sort of basic elements. Um, but again, I still think of this as sort of different electrical currents coursing through the work and coursing through the walls and through the space. Um, and I often actually think about this work as if I zoomed in further onto the brain fruit and started to like blow that up. What would that look like and what might be revealed? Um, and it's kind of ironic on the one hand when you think of a electrical current yeah. choosing the path of least resistance. Right. And these are all like like that. What is it about that that serpentine kind of wayward shape that is that is the path of least resistance that right. that, that that current might take? Would you ever like think about doing uh, maybe something that's not I guess like in the gallery? Or do you see it as being in gallery space? For a long time, I was really obsessed with like the white space, like why in order to exist in this void. So it was almost like the gallery became like a petri dish or uh, this sort of sterile space for the work. And I am starting to move away from that, but 
I don't know how far just yet. Taking risks, and that's really important for my social process as well. Mm -hmm. 